All right, so uh, I just got back from Planet Comic Con, but what we're going to talk about today is convention banners. Here we go. All right, when you go to a convention, like one of the first things you need to do, right, to take there is your actual product, obviously. Like you can't go to a con and be like, well, here I am, I'm just sitting around doing nothing. You should probably have like books or comics or things like that, maybe even some prints. If you haven't done a full comic yet, that's okay. But after you have a thing to sell at a convention, I think the second most important thing to have is one of these, a banner. When you obviously start out, nobody knows who the heck you are. And you can't assume that of the thousands and thousands of people, the tens of thousands of people that show up at these conventions, that even, you know, 10% of them are gonna know who the heck you are. So banners are a really great way to catch somebody's eye as they're walking past your table that they may never have seen what you're selling. Let's pull mine out here. So yeah, this is the banner. There's a couple things to note about this thing. This is the cover from Night Smoke Volume 1. When I first showed up to at a convention, this same picture was on the cover of all of my books. So this character that they saw was the thing that drove people to look at the book and pick it up and know that it's the same thing. So that's super important, one. Another big thing to note is that my name and the name of the book that I'm promoting is right at the top. When I first started doing conventions, Nobody knows who Scott Drummond is, right? Um, so what I was trying to do more than anything was promote the thing that I'm selling. I wasn't trying to promote myself as much. However, that's up to you with whichever one you want to do more than anything else. So you can promote your name or you can promote, if you have one thing on your table, uh, promote whatever that thing is. So I chose to promote Night Smoke over my name because it was I knew it was an ongoing project and I knew I was gonna be doing it for a while. Another thing to notice, how high you know my name and the name of the book are on the banner. That's super important. When people are walking through convention centers and there's like tons of these, down every single row, yours really needs to stand out. So if someone's looking for you, you want them to be able to see what your name is right off the bat. At convention centers, these are gonna be behind your table. So you're not gonna be able to see anything below this point, right? Um, because someone's gonna be across the table, across the room. So basically anything below your waist at the banner, anything below about halfway is just wasted space. What I do when I go to conventions is I have a suitcase, a really large suitcase, and I'll even put the banner on top of the suitcase so that it gets a little bit more height so you can see a little bit more of my picture because anything that's you know lower, it, it's just irrelevant. Another thing I've seen people do is put like contact info on the banner, maybe your Instagram or your website. I don't do that because one, I just wanted to clean it up and I can just say it's nightsmokecomic.com. Like, people can find that pretty easily. I can just say Google my name and Night Smoke and you'll find me. If you have a weird named comic or something, or it has, you know, your, your website isn't anything that is represented on the banner, maybe that's something you should do so that you can help people find your stuff. Things I would avoid is putting stuff like QR codes on your banner. Kind of in the same vein, you want people to find where you are online, but QR codes are gross and outdated and nobody knows how to really use them. They're just too awkward. And besides like, you don't want anybody walking behind your table to like take a pic, I just, it's not a good idea. It's not a good look. And another thing that's sort of in that same vein is I wouldn't put anything on my banner that I haven't really worked on. Let's say I did like a really cool Spider-Man drawing and I love Spider-Man, like he's great, but I don't own any Spider-Man stuff and I haven't put in, been put on any Spider-Man books. Like nobody's paid me to draw Spider-Man. So I think it'd be sort of disingenuous to be like, here's my Spider-Man stuff. You can't buy any of it, I guess, except for maybe prints or something. Like you should promote your own stuff with your own banner, right? And not do a, a bait and switch. It kind of comes off like you don't have the confidence in your own stuff. So I would recommend putting whatever you want to sell, put that foot forward. It's good enough, you're good enough, and all your stuff is good enough to sell on its own. People can see cool stuff and get excited that hey, this is a neat new thing that maybe I'm interested in. As far as tech specs and everything goes, uh, the banner I got here, I got in town. Uh, there's some places online you can go, but I think I would recommend finding somewhere local that's a printer shop to do it for you. 
there's a couple good reasons for this. One, uh, you can kind of call them on the phone like a person, and or maybe even email them and ask them about the banners. It's great. Like, people will pick up the phone and talk to you. It's wild. You don't just have to order everything off the internet. Two, they're pretty accommodating. Like, you can talk to them about specs and things like that, and they can help you kind of walk through this process. You don't have to rely on people like me on YouTube being like, hey, how do I do this stuff? So they can kind of help you with that. Three, you save money. It's usually a little bit cheaper because even if it is maybe like five or ten bucks more than going with somewhere online, it will uh, kind of even out with the shipping costs because shipping usually, you know, for something like this, it's a little bit heavier. Uh, it's kind of an awkward size. The shipping is usually pretty expensive, you know, 20, 30 bucks. And the biggest reason that I'd recommend going somewhere local is that these things break, like this can get busted. Like you're gonna take this to a lot of shows. You're gonna put it and travel with it. Sometimes stuff goes wrong. Uh, I was at a convention and I screwed up, uh, grabbed the top of this thing. I just barely missed putting the, the, the pole in the top and it slipped out of my hand and the whole banner came crashing down and the top piece broke. Uh, I thought I was screwed. I thought I had to buy a whole new banner. I mean, not the actual silk screen part, but the, the, the case stuff. And I was like, this whole thing is ruined. But I ended up just going to the place that I got this from. Uh, I think largeprinting.com is their website. This is not a paid thing at all. Like they, I just am very happy with them. And they gave me a new top piece for free, like just because they're local and I went in to talk to them and was nice and they wanted to be nice to me. So that was really cool of them. And so I will, I will tell everybody in town that to go to them, like, but going somewhere local is uh, a huge for that kind of stuff. Here, I, I just pulled up the specs on this thing. This is uh, called the Mosquito 800 is what I got. It was $150. Uh, it's 31 and a half by 78 and a half inches is the graphic size. Uh, it comes with a carrying bag, which is great. And it's a, it's a perfect size for travel. You can take this on airplanes and nobody's ever said anything to me about it. It's a little, maybe a little bit big, but if you just kind of walk in, like you know what you're doing, nobody will blink twice and it's really fantastic. Plus the other nice thing about going somewhere local is that they'll usually do things in like a couple days and then you can just go pick it up. You don't have to wait like a week for them to print it and then ship it to you. So if you're kind of running last minute, they can do that too. Also, huge thanks to you guys. As of this video, we crossed 100 subscribers, which is crazy. I feel like that's pretty cool. So thank you so much for doing that. If you have found this video somewhere uh, else and are not subscribed, think about doing that now. It's right somewhere here. That's how new this channel is. I don't even know where to point for the subscriber thing is. It's right here or right here. So let's sum it up. Convention banners, super important. Once you have something to sell and are going to cons, you need a convention banner to separate you from everyone else. And it's really important to show what your name is, what the projects you're working on, big bold colors, put everything near the top of the banner. You gotta put all your contact info in there if you wanna do that and not do business cards. Don't use any QR codes. Don't put unimportant stuff on there. This isn't for just everything you've ever worked on. It is for what you want to highlight. It's, it's basically the initial ad that someone's gonna see when they see you at a convention, whether they know you from social media or have no idea who the heck you are. Have it represent you. Have people in drawn to your table to see all your stuff. So that's what I got. Hopefully this video is helpful for you. Uh, hopefully you have an awesome convention. I'm super excited for you if, the, if you're going to your first convention soon. Uh, they're awesome. They're kind of scary, but they're a blast and you're gonna have a great time. Just, uh, you know, be confident and you're gonna kill it. So good luck and I'll see you next time. <laughs>